I really hope Kevin doesn't fall. Oh no, falling, falling! So immediately in self-arrest position. That guy is going to hope that you two hold him and that all three of you don't go sliding down the mountain. Okay. All right, so we arrest the fall, communicate with the mid climber. David, you okay? Yeah, I'm all right. I think okay. I got him. Okay, you're solid? I'm solid. All right, I'm going to come down to you. So that middle climber is now holding the entire weight on their own of Kevin, the fallen climber. So you've got to make sure your feet are planted, your ice axe is in, and you don't move. You've got them. Lead climber, just to be safe, start probing your way back. You don't want him to have to hold both of you. Taking the slack out of the rope as you go. So if you do fall, you don't fall the whole length. There you go, David. All right. I mean, you have to feel yourself slipping or anything. You grab a chair for the anchors. Oh, yeah, I grab another one. Grab my anchor material. The way I have it currently set up is I have my two master points already tied with a shorter leg and a longer leg. So Take the two. I right, take the two roll over. You keep this in. All right. And I went and clipped it. I clipped it to the bite of rope that he's clipped into. Yeah, so he's clipping it into my, what I'm tied in with. And that will allow him to exit the system. And Not I yet. Not yet. No. <laughs> no. So he's going to sit here and build a dead man. He's going to put a vertical picket in. He's going to decide the best way of securing this anchor for the conditions that you're on. So at this point now, the line is semi-secure. We've got at least one anchor in. He's managing his rope so he's not building the anchor on top of your rope. You want to make sure you're rope is out of the way and on top of your anchor system. Into your um, tie-in. So it's the harness and the middle. No, it's the, your, your, blade, your knot that you tied, that you put into your carriage. clipped into the alpine butterfly that I'm clipped into. Oh, so the, um, your alpine butterfly. Right? Yeah, my alpine butterfly. Not my harness, because then I'm stuck and can't get out. So you only clip into the butterfly knot. All right. Which so is why we were. Have a big one. Yes, yeah. exactly. Right. So that you can reach and get to it. Yeah, yeah. Because he may, that may be buried in snow. Does, does everybody know why you want to clip into that? No. Okay. So eventually he's going to want to get himself out of the system so he can unclip from it. And you've got your anchor. Yeah. You and I was, even if I unclip from, as you'll see, even if I unclip from my tie-in knot, which you usually think is not safe, I still have the Prusix on each side of that knot. So my Prusix will allow me to still be hooked to the rope, but safely in, you know. Okay, yeah, Brian, knot. what knot did you yeah. just use? Yeah. So for the second link, which is slightly longer than the pre-tied side, it makes it a little easier. So I do a clove, get it tight, and then I just clip the overhand on a bite to back it up, just in case if it does slip, it won't re-slide out. With the pickets, make sure you do good anchor at 60 degrees apart. Make sure they aren't on the same plane of snow, so if the snow breaks, both don't slide out. And that's why having one longer than the other. Um, you could even, with the second one, put it right in front of him, make sure they're separated enough. But David is now part of the equalized anchor. Yeah, so now theoretically the, the anchor is keep the line taut. hopefully holding. 
You're ready? Be like, all right, David, knees off. Yeah, I'm ready to self gonna, arrest. I'm gonna let if go. You go. Slide out. All right, the anchor seems to be holding. Okay. How is the weight off of him right now? He should still be being pulled by the. Well, well, no, because I backed off and see, he anchored into my butterfly. You're just moving in your own loop right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so. Yeah, so I'm still hooked into the butterfly, but I've got a little space to move. Okay. And and that's why when you do that, you got to make sure you don't accidentally clip the person's belay loop, their carabiner. You want to clip just their butterfly, you know, just their tie-in knot, because now it should be holding on the anchor through that. And so theoretically, to to be able to help out, I can unclip from my tie-in knot, but I still have my Prusix. Yeah. So I'm still hooked to the rope. So I'm still safe. You're just sort of trapped. Mm -hmm. And make sure you don't build the anchor over them because they can get pinned and it's definitely happened. So now that- So how do they do it over them? That they flipped over on their stomach? Yeah, so if I were to take the strand and like Walked it and it goes over his back, and then I set it. All right. Versus, you might have to feed it kind of like under their elbow yeah. to get that V for your ankle. All right. And David or you, you can take. have the rope hmm? trapped in between the strands, and then it gets tangled because now you don't have the hull system right correctly. All right. So you want to make sure there's nothing coming into your anchor at all. Everything's cleared out. Yeah, so that's very important to manage your rope as you're building that anchor to keep it on, you know, away from on top of everything and, and not tangled. So now that the anchor is set, I'm going to go check on Kevin. David, let me get your axe. So David now is missing his... Pre or his um Pick it, and now he's losing his axe. That's good. Middle climber is pretty useless. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Kevin. Hey. How you doing? I'm all right. Are you okay? Yeah, I hurt my ankle. Uh, you think you're gonna be able to climb out? No, I'm not Patrick Mahomes. I don't think I'm out of a hole with one ankle. Okay. How how far down are you? About 10 feet. 10 feet? How big is the lip? Small, but you probably want to kick it out if you can. It's okay. Two feet. So it hangs out about two feet. You're about 10 feet down? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Which All we right. don't have enough room space. <laughs> this is the lip right here, we'll say. So he says he's about 10 feet down. The lip is two feet out. You need to clear the lip so he can come up. Otherwise, you're going to literally haul him into the lip, and he can actually get crushed up against it. <laughs> So, off to side. Hey Kevin, I'm gonna prep the whip. Some snow's gonna come down. You ready? Gotcha. Hopefully you can put his hood up, make sure he doesn't have his pack open, anything like that. Start clearing away, making a nice little channel with the rope that's gonna go down. Okay, whip's clear. Are you pulling this one towards you, Ben? It's going down. I'm like just yeah, it's a crevasse. It. It's, it's steep, so you're just kind of cutting through it, and it's gonna fall down. Yeah, right. That's why you you warn the the climber that's in the crevasse that you're doing that because snow is gonna be coming down on them. Yeah, two feet out and probably like maybe a foot <clears throat> deep is gonna start breaking off down on them. So we're gonna pause. Did anyone notice what Kevin's done while everyone else was talking? Put on his swing and he put on his chain. Yep. So you are going to A, either already have your harness pre tied to you, or you're going to take this chance to drop your pack, get your harness put on, and then get out any puffy warm stuff because the temperatures in the crevasse are way colder and you don't want to get hypothermic while you're trying to be rescued. Chest or, chest yeah, the tennis, chest the chest harness. harness. Yeah. So we'll go more into depth in your individuals, but we'll show a video as well on how to tie and put your chest harness on. Do you not just automatically just have that on? You can. You yeah, you can. You're puffy? I mean, no, the, the, the chest harness. Oh, he's talking about. 
I had mine on for like I think every day I'm in LA I never took it off. I just kept it on my phone later and I just slept in it and I never took it off. <laughs> <laughs> Becomes it starts growing into your skin. <laughs> Okay, so Kevin has done his homework as well while he's in the crevasse while it's being prepped up top. So that was just a pause. Okay. So one other thing, <laughs> if Kevin's able to, if he can get an ice screw in the wall yep. and clip to it, he will take a lot of weight off the row. So it'll be a lot easier. He won't be pulling. And if he can do that right away, it'll help the mid-climber a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and if he might be on a tiny shelf that could give way as well, so that'll keep him from falling further. Yeah. So I've placed one ice axe down. This is going to be what keeps the rope from cutting into the crevasse lip as we try and pull him out. I'll secure it with the other axe so it doesn't go in. So either straight down or like that, making sure the edges of the rope don't get the picket or or the ads for the pick. I will take a bite of rope, put a locking carabiner on it. Kevin, I'm dropping you Brian, the loop. Brian, your coils. I'll do that first. So, can you talk about the risk of Brian falling in while he's on the edge like that? Or is he's got the prusik? Yeah, so he's right. still that's attached. Enough. So he's, yeah, he's got the prusik and he keeps it you know, so theoretically, if the anchor holds and, and he slipped, it, it caved in and cross gave way more, he wouldn't go very far, sure. In a scenario, there's a lot more space uh, between yeah. all of this. <laughs> yeah, it would be the entire length from the midpoint to his coils. <laughs> yeah. So. So once um, Brian's checked on Kevin, he's cleared the lip, he is now going to take the coils off of him which we discussed last week in a nice manner so they don't get all jacked up because you're going to use that rope to throw down to Kevin. Do we want to try to stretch this out a little bit? Or... Eh, we're set up at this point. Okay. <laughs> all right, this is going to get really tight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Take your coils off <laughs> one at a time. Could we move it this way? Yeah, we could shift and scoot everybody. Kevin looks comfortable yeah, against the door, easy. though. I don't know if we want to move him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, he's got plenty of slack. He has no say in this. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys want to scoot down some? Yeah, let's do it. Notice how Brian uncoiled, just kind of one coil at a time. Mm -hmm. um, when you're there, it's just out. It's going to see, you're going to think you're going to want to throw it down, but it's just going to get tangled. going to have to retire. Rope management, again, is really important. No, just pull. Just pull everybody back. <laughs> back on. <laughs> All right. So now that there's enough rope out. Guys. <laughs> now that enough rope is out, I'll drop a loop with a locking carabiner on to him. Kevin, in the middle of the rope. Uh, it's just like, the coils. He kind of roughly estimate, so he said he's 10 feet down, so I try and get enough slack out that it's going to reach him. Um, when you're at St. Mary's, you're just kind of whipping it at each other. So, <laughs> yeah, so if you don't really have true crevasse, yeah, there, there's, there's no down, downward yeah. force, but a lot of times if you get over the lip, you just kind of keep feeding it. Until what you do you do with the excess rope on the other side? No we'll get to that. that. That's what's going to be repulsive. All right. Yeah. So, Kevin, I'm dropping you the loop. Clip it to your belay loop. Clips. Okay. You want to get the master points in this one? And then Kevin's also going to attach his chest harness to that rope that got dropped down. This way it's going to keep his body upright because there is a chance that when he fell, um, he flung back. So once he drops his pack, he can stay a little bit more upright. And then the chest harness also keeps him upright. And the pack is Just dangling. Hanging. Yep. Just hanging. Now you'll note I tied another knot here. This is just an overhand on a bite. 
this will become the master point for the hull system. So this is kind of the, the point of the anchor that's holding everything. Um, but then you, you tie a new point, and especially if it's in a real situation where there's you know, 15 meters between each of us or whatever, um, you want the master point farther down, closer towards the crevasse. That gives you more rope to work with for the hull. All right. And you took your cross off the load side and you kept it on there? Yeah, because realistically, this is going to give me movement. This, which is weighted, is buried in the snow. So, so ideally, David's project would be over on top the deadline, yeah. which because right. the deadline so far in the snow that you you can't do anything. Which you can correct if you keep your pressic on the deadline, switch that one over, and right. then you can remove the yep. one from the deadline. Yep. So you're still attached in, but can correct. So now, David, go ahead at the pulley. So I'm trying to remember from the book, like the decision to go for the whole system. That, is that a decision, or are we doing that 100% of the time? We, Versus just not. like pulling it? Yeah, well, like we said, I mean, you want to do the anchor so everybody's safe. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you're a fallen climber, if you can communicate with him and he says, I'm fine, I think I can press it out, then you let him do that. Sure. Because that's easier for everybody. But in the case that you know, he's injured or, or can't get out for whatever reason, then you have to haul. If okay. you can press it out, do you still need to prepare the lift so for him? You gotta switch your yeah. pressics. Yeah, maybe you just drop them a, a loop and we'll pull off of that. Lots of options before you get to this point. It's like max leverage. All right, so now we put a pulley on to the master point. So this line is now going down to him. This line is the fixed one. So on this line, you'll put your prusset. And this is the one scenario where we can use our hollow blocks is in this location right here. Why is that? Um, because it's not a direct fall. It's a managing There's piece. There's no chance of shock loading. Yeah. And both of these are locking carabiners off this master point. And now I've attached a prusik, which will, is the progress capture, which will keep this from spooling out. And now kind of as, as the middle climber here, that's kind of my job now once, that, that's your job in the middle climber once the hauling starts, you, you mine the prusik, make sure it, it stays taut, doesn't get caught up in the pulley. Yeah. So, and then this will be the prusik that the next pulley will go on. I like to do it right at the top so I don't accidentally put it on the wrong line. Yeah, because you want to. And then you go to haul and nothing's happening. It just feeds yeah. up and feeds down. Both prusiks will be on the same strand. And this is where it becomes a six-in-one haul system is by adding this bottom lower um, pulley. Yeah, mind you, this is all the snow with gloves on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so now the line on the other side of the process will go through the new pulley and this now becomes the hall line. So I need to exit my original prusik that was keeping me from falling and get onto the hall line or the tractor. So from the lead climber, I like to think pulley, pulley, prusik, prusik. 
from your harness as the lead climber. So it's two and two. So you have your personal prusik, but then you have a pulley and a pulley and then two more prusiks. So now that I'm on the haul line, I can leave this one because since this one is capturing it, there's no way for this to slip out and for me to go in. Now, while managing, slide this all the way down to the wood, making sure I don't go far enough that I can fall in. So you're sliding your pressing off your harness as well as the one on the haul yeah, line as you hall. move. And then, go ahead and give the fallen climber a heads up. Kevin, you ready to haul? Sure. Okay, <laughs> falling. I'm good. At this point, you're bear crawling up. It's fully loaded. You're in probably semi deep snow. David should All be yelling right, reset. a reset. little sooner than that. Because okay. <laughs> you're going to be like hauling ass up there. So at least like a hand's length, if not more of a warning that they're going to need to stop and reset. Hands length where? Like where the pulley. Between these two process. Okay. Yeah. Or where, because his pulley, pulley. Yeah. jammed into the other pulley. Yeah. Yeah, because now to keep hauling, we have to reset that I press bottom prusik and pulley. Okay. Yeah, the line. So yeah. this prusik is holding back the way, way, and then he resets that back down. All right, Kevin, hauling. And then he keeps hauling again. Yes. So, I mean, this is like worst case scenario. Like, this is a six to one pull day. There's a lot of mechanical advantage. Like, in your head, in reality, like, one is like, can we pull them out? Can we literally both to them to like walk the other direction and pull them out? That's an option, right? It's fast, clean. Well, you need to be anchored into something. Well, let's say he's like, he or she or they are here, and they can like walk one direction and pull them out, right? That's not a smart idea because if you are if you go off walking and you fall into a crevasse, now you've got two people on the same rope in a crevasse, okay. separated from each other by an island of ice. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But we're looking for like speed, right, to the sky. Because um, it's all it's a spectrum of risk, right? So, mm -hmm. so that's one option. And the other option is like, I'm just I'm curious, confused why we go a six to one and like a three to one. Because this is going to make his weight a lot less than if you had one less pulley. You are going to be pulling a lot more weight up. So this disperses the weight. So it's a little bit easier for a single person to haul him up. Because he, he's not. I think I'm 180 and I'll probably be carrying, depending on the exhibition, between 40 and 60 pounds or more. It depends on the exhibition. Like, he has a sled, too. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're doing an alley, the sled could be down with you. Yeah. You have 120 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> really depends on where you're at. That's a, that's a long conversation. It's a really yes. Question, but it is yeah. a long conversation. There is a video somewhere talking about pulleys, and it's really geeked out if you really, I'll find it. <laughs> so the, the first thing you 